Welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage. Day four, RSA Conference. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. Dave Vellante has left the building. He's flying back to Boston. Uh, we had four days of great coverage, a lot of content coming out, and one of the big themes has been the platformification. You know, we've seen cloud native become very important, a lot of open source, a lot of conversations around, around hardening the infrastructure by enabling uh, agility. We've got two great guests, we're going to talk a lot about that right now. Travis Stanfield, the co-founder and CEO of Stacklet, and Gokul Srinivasan, senior partner, solution architect at AWS. Gentlemen, thanks for coming on. Thank, Thank you, you for having us, John. So first, let's, sit, let's introduce you guys. We know AWS, Stacklet, what do you guys do? What's the company? Why do you guys exist? Sure, we are the cloud governance solution. Uh, we help organizations manage and reduce their costs and risks. Uh, we do that through our governance as code platform, right, which can be delivered and available to customers through a very easy to use software as a service. Uh, and we're, we've got a few other things which we'll get into. And you got the open source angle too. Open with source. The CNCF. That's correct. So we are based off of an open source project called Cloud Custodian uh, that we are the core and creative team behind. My co-founder yeah. is the uh, creator and lead maintainer. And uh, certainly as we will discuss here, yeah. it gives yeah. us a <laughs> number of unfair strategic advantages. Yeah. And by the way, just a shout out, super cool work, congratulations. Coco, what's your role as a solution architect? What are you putting together at AWS? Yeah, I'm the senior partner solution architect supporting our global startups such as Stacklet. And as part of the uh, global startup program, we help the partners, essentially the startups, uh, with the co-build activity where we engage them and uh, promote their uh, activities. And then uh, we support them in the go-to marketing and support them with the co-sell. Essentially, we wanted to ensure that the partner yeah. solutions that are being promoted via AWS are meeting all the security guardrails are the best in the class. So that way the customer get the experience of uh, just not the core AWS services, but also the benefits from the partner solutions. Yeah, great stuff by the way. We're very familiar with the work you guys are doing with our, st our startup showcase. We've been showcasing a lot of your success stories, so good job, well, well done. You. So let's turn into the governance. What is cloud governance? What, how do you guys define that? Define what is cloud governance today? Okay. So, in a simplistic term, uh, cloud governance is essentially uh, a set of framework that helps the customer establish the processes and select the right set of tools for the overall management and the governance of their cloud ecosystem. And uh, the customer look into the cloud governance into two different aspects. The first one, uh, providing them the better control of their uh, cloud management. And second aspect is the agility to build newer applications and innovate faster. And with uh, AWS services, you do not have to choose either the control or the agility. You can have both uh, for the scale of your organization. And uh, st slicing the cloud governance even further, the cloud governance is uh, formed of four major pillars. First, to begin with, the security control, which, uh, which focuses on areas like uh, the encryptions and also the permissions and the identities. And then comes in the uh, cost control, where the customers want to achieve the cost control of their overall cloud operations. And then, the most important aspect when it comes to the cloud governance is around the compliance. And compliance can come in variety of form. Either it could be a regional compliance like a SOC 2, or a GDPR, or a regulated industry governance like a HIPAA or a PCI compliance. And finally, the customer wants to ensure that the cloud governance is in alignment with their overall corporate governance. They do not want to have a multiple governance model. So the alignment of the cloud governance with the overall corporate governance model becomes very important. So in a nutshell, what our customers are looking out for is end-to-end uh, -end visibility tool that provides the, all the aspects of the cloud governance that caters to all levels of the organization from a CXO to a DevOps engineer. That's awesome, and then you want to also have the governance and, and have agility, not slow things down at Absolutely. the same time. Yeah. Cloud governance, what's your definition? Sure, and I, I think Goku gave an amazing definition of it. I would add a few things, certainly the policies themselves, right? They're kind of the heartbeat of your governance definition as it is implemented, and you want those to be as easy to use uh, for all of the different stakeholders that get involved with governance. You don't want to create a high technical bar, right, yeah. for the organization to continue to contribute and collaborate around this important topic. And then also um, making sure that the 
governance, the policies can be deployed using techniques like CICD that the organization is already using and um, perhaps Git, right, which is already well known across multiple organizations for how folks can collaborate, right, continue to use uh, the best practices that developers use for uh, making sure that your cloud is well governed and you're, you're well managed in the cloud. Yeah, it's certainly important, and globally too, we're seeing a lot of global activity, governance is huge, compliance, governance, most people say, oh my God, it's so much hassle, but you want to make it fast, but yet hit all the numbers, but not make it slow down, but also hit the, hit the, hit the compliance. Totally, totally get it. How do you guys help? What's the differentiations for Stacklet? What's, what's your piece on this? And what, how do you make it better and go faster and differentiate? Sure, I'd say, I'd start off with, we help the organization unify several of these disparate teams towards the shared objectives around governance. So the, sh the different teams can be the cloud engineering team, the compliance and risk team, yeah. the FinOps teams, the DevOps teams, all of those, if they are working together, can help the organization achieve their efficiency goals, right, around financial uh, uh, governance. They can achieve the compliance goals, they can achieve yeah. the security goals. That's kind of the first piece. The second is uh, we do which can be a bit of a controversial subject in security circles, we do the automated real-time remediation and prevention, right? We do that both in event-based and periodic uh, uh, modes and combination of both. And we do that by making action a first-class citizen in our policy language. You don't have to do anything else to you know, let's say construct a workflow to integrate, to communicate with your team uh, around your policy findings. You simply can dial that in and what it does is give you a declarative experience. You yeah. can design the end state of your cloud and if anything goes bump in the night, <laughs> you know that it's going to get gracefully course corrected in line with what your organization would like it to, uh, to be. So, uh, and then the third, last but not least, is uh, the massive community that we have around Cloud Custodian. Yeah. It is the de facto industry standard for governance yeah. and for policies. Um, and you know, certainly why this is important is folks like AWS yeah. continue to innovate at light speed. Yeah. You want to keep up with that pace of innovation yeah. and you certainly want to do so across all of the different, the long tail of all the different things that Amazon offers and then oh by the way, if you're multi-cloud, that long tail gets even longer and yeah. the, the challenge becomes even more compounded. A couple, couple follow-ups, Travis, if you don't mind. First yeah, of all, please. give some color to the governance, the open source part of that. What's successful, I know it's successful, congratulations. I think this is now an event, is it now an event? Yes, so we, uh, uh, um, the, so the project is now uh, part of the CNCF, right, it's in yeah. the incubation stage of the CNCF maturity cycle for open source projects, so that's, uh, right in line. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Next step is it gets endorsed. That's in. exactly, the last. The, the next step is the last step, and uh, certainly we are well on our way towards uh, achieving that final, uh, that final stage. Um, the community in terms of how wide and large and diverse it is, uh, we've got almost 400 contributors all time uh, in yeah. use by thousands of organizations. We've got thousands of people in our you know, chat uh, uh, groups and that sort of thing, so it's um, already, as mentioned, yeah. like the, the, yeah. the industry It was a pretty standard. fast rise too, by the way, just sure. pointed out, good job on that. My other question is, you went back to this, said something's controversial. It's, what you were saying, it sounded great to me, why would that be controversial? Declarative? Um, Look, I think um, there's what, what still controversy is there? there's still I mean, some organizations for which, like the the CISO or the security group, maybe isn't empowered to take action, right? They want to perhaps cut a ticket, flip it over the fence, and that's okay. But at a certain level of scale well, in the cloud, the you need the automation. Well, yeah, well, yeah, well yeah, you yeah. just said that's it's the right. ideal preferred steady state. You, you want to have it. action built into the workflow, you automation. Got you got. Correction, self-healing, tuning, I mean all the- You don't just want it, you yeah. need it at a certain I mean, that level. That doesn't sound like me. it sounds like yeah. a preferred state. It is, but- It's like WebAssembly, it's, it's like, why, why didn't we that happen sooner? Yeah, exactly, you know, like, exactly. It's obvious, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of yeah. like, hey, yeah. no brainer. Right. All right, let's get into the Amazon side. The tool chain involved, you guys know this on, and on the compliance side, it comes up all the time when I do Amazon interviews, Amazon Web Services interviews. Compliance is not easy when you're looking at regional, but you have a lot of region, you can make things work better across the cloud. How important do you see this piece of it? Because you got now open source and developers coding in line, get the new, the new preferred method. 
Um, you guys are used to this undifferentiated heavy lifting being automated away. Oh, absolutely. But can you add some color to the, how that works with the Amazon tool chain? Okay, so within the Amazon tool chain, there are uh, two or three different Im uh, important aspects, right? Even internal to AWS, our recommendation is to automate and go with the API and uh, cloud formation and the infrastructure as a code, as the fundamental building blocks. Because essentially, wha what we have seen is just not the success story of our customers, but also where our customers and partners had challenges. To give an uh, example, uh, there we have a lot of customers who start bundling a lot of their business workloads into a single AWS account, and then without no governance. And then when they really want to scale and grow their business, there is a lot of opportunity coming in, but they are unable to scale, and that slows down their business growth prospect because the governance was not in place. So they, they didn't, they was an afterthought relative exactly. to the deployment. Exactly, and they then, started with the business functionality. that causes what problems for Exactly. Them. So they started with the business first approach. The, the solution was great, the technology was good, but there was no governance in place. As you rightly brought up, there are multiple regions. When they want to scale across these different regions, there are different teams operating these workloads. So these different teams and departments, they look for their own set of controls, their own set of governance policies, and also they wanted to manage the cost because of the ge different geographies and the different uh, compliance that are required in those geographies. So in order to manage it, this is essentially where the governance becomes an essential part. And this is one area where we found that governance platforms like Stackler really plays the differentiating role. Yeah, yeah. And uh, one of- governance is code. It yes, is. That's absolutely. basically what it is. That's it's infrastructure right. as code to governance. Exactly. You built your cloud with code, you should govern your cloud with code as well. Take us through on the stack side. So I'm a developer, say I screwed up and I didn't do the compliance, I bought and bolted on after as an afterthought. Do I have to go back and redo it or so take me through that scenario and then what happens if I want to be more proactive? Is it built into my CI CD pipeline? I mean, sure. can you take me through the developer aspect of it? Yeah, so one of the things that we have just announced and just launched is what we refer to as our infrastructure as code governance. So as we are describing in this conversation, the way you get to cloud today predominantly is going to be through an infrastructure as code technique. And when you're doing that, as you're mentioning, it's, there's a developer experience that you want to engage with and you want to have your controls engage with as well, your governance and compliance policies. So the way we do that is we give you the ability at the developer workstation at the CI and at the CD level, right? The the um, pre -mer or, sorry pre merge, pre commit, pre deploy, and then also at runtime ability to dial in these policies, right? We do that through the same experience uh, that Cloud Custodian gives you. This very easy to use, human readable YAML DSL, and. Uh, what that does is it unlocks a prevention story, right? Yeah. You can fix the things at the source, no pun intended, <laughs> right? Are you and shifting left? We are shifting <laughs> left, yes, That's absolutely. What doing. That yeah. is exactly what we're doing. We have already shifted the challenges of governance left by embracing governance's code and creating a platform around that. Mm -hmm. Now we're also embracing that and making that possible right where the developer lives in the workstation, the pipeline, and uh, the deploy, right? You can now have that complete control inclusive of what's yeah. going on at runtime and do so in a way, as mentioned, that's uh, going to 10X the organization because they're yeah. going to be more engaged in the policy uh, creation. And how does the developer know that they got the governance as code is it more education, it's just got to know it's there, I mean, or is it more of they don't really have to think about it? Uh, well, so the experience is going to be very similar to like a, a, another coding standard, right? Yeah, hey, yeah. you made this violation, this misconfiguration, this is not aligned to best practice. This being, let's say, the infrastructure is code that you, uh, let's say, were developing right there in your workstation or trying to uh, merge in yeah. or deploy out, right? You will uh, detect all of those things, inform the developer, hey, do you realize yeah. where you perhaps uh, violated our best practice? Here's the recommended Got way it. of doing that, and that um, creates the reinforcement learning that ultimately changes the culture for the developers to be more aligned and embracing of the organization best practices, and what it does is it gets them going faster. What's the market like? Because this is one of those things where I can see enterprise missing the boat on this or not paying attention. It kind of reminds me of the old days when in enterprise where backup was not thought about until like, oh, we're we going to back this stuff up. They put bolted on as an afterthought. And then that became, they flipped the script now with ransomware and security. No one talks about backup as an afterthought. It's all on the front end, it's all designed in. This is designing it into the beginning. That's right. This is what's happening. That's right. How aware are the customers 
on this? Because imagine it must be some going, hey, I get this. And yeah. some saying, wait a minute, I didn't know I needed to do that. And then so, so where are we on the progression and the mind share of the customers? You guys could share some sure. commentary on uh, that. I'm, I'll start. Yeah. So, I think um, Gokul made an astute observation that a lot of the early uh, approaches to cloud may not have appropriately taken into account like how do I prevent these things, right? Mm -hmm. So there it can be oftentimes with a customer journey the need to, let's say, dial in some remediation mm -hmm. and uh, reduce the technical debt that may have been accumulated from the early entry approaches into cloud. But then I think everybody can appreciate, hey, if I can avoid that technical debt through preventative controls, we would absolutely do that. So there's a lot of resonance towards that approach and we do that in as easy to use and a way that embraces and unifies the organization. Yeah, as uh, Travis rightly said, what we are observing from our end customer and partner side is that the detection earlier in the stages is really increasing the productivity of the developers by multifold. Because this is just not about the technical aspect, also from the, the overall DevOps process, it eliminates a lot of mm -hmm. the unnecessary tickets and also unnecessary yeah. meetings. So it's, it enables the developers and empowers them to experiment yeah. with a variety of aspect. And then, in a lot of organization, the responsibility is spread across multiple teams. The developers probably don't have much insight into the, the security needs or the compliance needs because they are probably yeah. fully focusing on the technical aspect. Yeah. So this shift left approach helps them identify. Time. It's a matter of time. I mean, exactly. no one does tickets. I mean, come on. <laughs> it's just like, it's so antiquated, it's so vulnerable, it's, I mean, I think it's a wake up call. I'm sure you guys are going to do really well. Talk about your customer base. I know you guys have a lot of confidential big customers. Uh, I know you can't say their names, but you know, the, give them give a taste of some of the organizations sure. that are working with you. Size, scope, needs. Yeah. The, yeah. Their residents are they leaning in? What's their feedback? Yeah. Can you share some? some information. Uh, we actually just had a customer advisory board a few weeks ago. It was amazing and very invigorating. Our customers love our product. They are growing in users, usage, use cases. They're uh, becoming yeah. public advocates on our behalf. It's really a movement and uh, certainly that's exciting for us because we know and are passionate about mm. the challenge that we're solving and okay. making an impact in their lives. So, uh, and in terms of like the diversity of the customer base, we do have uh, one of Amazon's largest customers, so we know that uh, we can achieve the level of scale <laughs> at cloud s scale or cloud yeah. size, Absolutely. right? And then we also have uh, customers across you know other diverse, different verticals, like all yeah. verticals kind of face this challenge in the cloud. It's a horizontal solution. Every developer that's right. organization needs this. That's right. And I, and I got to say, just my observation in covering Amazon's cloud and just knowing how the global landscape is, this only going to get more pressure to be more sovereign in international uh, areas. You're going to have to stay within regions. It's going to be more policy is coming. Sure. That's, yeah. that's not yeah. ticket friendly. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you got me on the tickets thing. Yeah. It triggered me. <laughs> um, it's just so old. I mean, sure. it's, not a, not a, it's not controversial. It's like, it's going to happen. Right. I think people who are not going to align with actionable and, and self-healing self kind of thinking is well, going to be out of business. You get to a place in the cloud and we've seen you know, a lot of that attachment happen at a certain point where the infrastructure just isn't knowable in a single person's mind. Yeah. You can't, you know, throw enough people at the problem. Yeah. Some of the existing toolkit, as you mentioned, perhaps yeah. doesn't scale as appropriately as our solution does yeah. or has proven itself to have uh, accomplished. And you, you know, just get overwhelmed, right? And that's a big part of the journey that we take folks on is again, yeah. let's clean up some of the debt that you may have already accumulated and then let's really start to prevent it going forward yeah. and that's the, yeah. that that is the business velocity yeah. uh, uh, improvement that Gokul referenced. Yeah, it's first awareness, operationalize it and then it's going to self-tune itself, it's now, but, part of the operations, you obviously it. you know Make that. Sure. And, and part of the culture, right? Part getting of the culture, actually, yeah, I mean, and, and, and the, the fact that your open source project has so much traction, right. shows that it's not just um, tire kicking techies, and, and you got real practitioners that's right. in that community, that's right. I think that's a tell sign. Obviously Amazon, you know the cloud's global, and has um, opportunity. 
Absolutely. So, Travis Gokul, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate the breakdown of governance as code. Again, another sign that cloud is going to be at the center of the security equation. We know what's going to happen here. It's just a matter of time. Cloud, edge, on-premise as one operating model. Security will be with network, the key platform, the platformization, platformification of security is coming. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back with more on day four after this short break.